Hello folks and welcome back to the channel. Now, we are at one of my favourite venues. This is Holly Farm. Hope you can see there. This is Trotter's Lake. And this place is sort of your classic commercial fishery. We've got an island to chuck up to. And today is going to be all about a bit of a practice session. Now, I've fished a few of these types of venues recently. Fished this particular lake, in fact. And although we've done well, I feel that we can do better. I've been chucking either bombs out or hybrid feeders or method feeders. And I've got it in my head, I just want to come and try something a little bit different. So, we're rolling back the years a little bit to a method that I used to fish a hell of a lot of, and that's a little pellet feeder. I just think when you're targeting sort of smaller carp and F1s, those fish with slightly smaller mouths, obviously the water's still really cold, I think that tighter parcel of bait is going to be a winner. So, I've got all my gear set up all ready to go. We're going to walk through our little practice session. The weather's not the kindest. We've had some horrendous weather recently. But I think first things first, we'll talk about the gear and then we'll get ourselves into the session. So folks, we're all settled in at the pay. It's quite a windy day to be honest, but we're in a nice sheltered area of the lake. And I think this area of the lake has been fishing reasonable, so we should get a few bites. Now, what I want to do is, initially I just want to run you through the kit I'm using and really why I think a pellet feeder is going to be better than any other style of feeder on this venue for this particular style of fishing. So, because it's, you know, a pellet feeder, you don't have to change all of your kit over. It's just really the bait delivery system that we're talking about. So, it's just general commercial fishery feeder gear, really. I've got a nine foot rod. This is a high S um, F1 special, really nice soft rod. So, hopefully we're not going to lose any fish. I like to use an inline pellet feeder when I can and that means I've got to use a soft rod to absorb all the lunges of those fish. Obviously there's a bit of weight in, in, in that pellet feeder so I don't want the, the weight of the pellet feeder to bounce the hook out of the fish and just a soft rod helps with that. On the reel we've got six pound main line, that's M-Tech, MIDI M-Tech, really robust line, sinks like a brick, you know, no nonsense. Like I say, it's just my standard method, bomb, pellet feeder, you know, tackle this is. Now, we get down to the feeder itself. I've got a little midi pellet feeder. Like I say, it's in line. They've got this really nice ridged lead at the base, which means it just helps to, to grip the far, the far shelf of any, um, you know, steep shelving lake beds just helps a little bit so you're not moving your feeder because as we all know, we don't want to move the, the trap once it's in place. Now, to attach the feeder, I'll do a little close up of this, but I've just used my favorite little link off of a link swivel. And that, if you get the right size, fits perfectly in the recess of the bottom of the pellet feeder. Now, the reason I like that link instead of using maybe a dedicated bead, is you get a lot more movement on your hook length. Your hook length loop can, to, can move inside of that link, get a lot more movement. I just think the more movement you can get on your hook length, the more bites you're gonna get. It helps keep your bait in amongst your feed as well, so there's less stiffness at the business end. Now, the fact that that little link sits inside that recess, obviously means that the rig's sort of like a semi-fixed setup. So hopefully we can set the tip quite slack and fish are still gonna hook themselves. Now let's go on to the reason why I think a pellet feeder is gonna be better than a method feeder on, on this sort of venue. We're targeting F1s on, and small carp, that's the majority of the fish in this lake. So when I'm casting a method feeder out, okay, it provides a beautiful parcel of bait, but it's quite a large parcel of bait when you actually look at it. So a fish, in, in, a potentially a fish can come up from any angle, pick up a mouthful of bait and move off. Now, if your hook bait's not in the right place, you're not gonna catch that fish. So with a pellet feeder, because there's only one entry point for the fish to actually attack the bait, in theory, that is one suck. So if a fish comes up, he gets his head in that pellet feeder, he sucks up the loose feed, most of the time your hook bait's gonna go in his mouth. And obviously that's what we want. We don't want, him, we don't want those fish to be getting away with it. We want them to actually take our hook bait into their mouths. Like I said, a method feeder, sometimes the parcel bait is just a little bit too big and the bait spread is too much. So I think, especially for smaller fish, you gotta remember F1s, 
they're probably not going to attack a mephi feeder at this time of year and hammer every single pellet that's around that mephi feeder. They might just dip down, take one mouthful and move away. Like I say, that mouthful of, uh, that mouthful that F1 takes isn't anywhere near your hook bait, you're going to miss out on that fish. One thing that I've just not mentioned is the hook length. You know that I love short hook lengths. This hook length is two inches. It's 012 low vis. I've got a size 18 hook on and I'm just using a bait band because I think that these fish, because, the, because I can get my hook bait right next to my loose feed, it's obvious that, obvious that these fish are gonna want pellets. So I'm just gonna chuck a, a small pellet in the, a hard pellet in the band. These are actually, they're a four mil pellet, but they're a little bit larger than a four mil. They're probably near a five mil. I'm gonna put a, one of those pellets in the band, tuck it in the feeder, chuck it out and hope for the best. What I think I'll do is load the feeder up have a chuck out and just talk through my thinking behind working the swim because I think that's quite important as well, especially when the water's a bit colder. So folks, as always, it's pointless having the perfect bait delivery system and all the fancy gear if you're not gonna work your peg and chuck where the fish are. So what I want to talk about is just how I'd sort of like approach this standard sort of commercial fishery swim you know we've got an island here that's maybe 20 22 meters away i know that's going to hold a few fish but i also know that in a match you've got at least five hours and quite often if you don't get it right you'll run out of water and you'll end up pushing fish out of your swim especially when the water's cold like it is today so what i want to do is not go straight in that honey hole straight away you know my fear is by now I want to chuck out with a chance of catching a fish early on in the session, but I want to work to that best part of my peg at the best part of the day. So I'm not too worried if I don't get a, a mountain of fish in the first hour. I just want to get a feel for the swim, hopefully catch a couple of fish, but as the day goes on, I want to work towards those fish, maybe learn a few lessons about how the fish want to feed for when sort of like midday comes, that afternoon period where we all know during the colder months, that's when the fish start to feed a little bit better. So what I've done is I've put a bomb on just before we started, had a quick chuck out just to set the line clip. And what I've done is I've come maybe two meters back from the island. Like I said, I don't want to cast really tight straight away. And then as the session goes on, I'll just work my way towards that, towards that island and towards that cover where I fish, think those fish are. So we're going to have a chuck out. I've put one of those little pellets, those little hard pellets in the band. And I'm just going to load the pellet feeder up. So, standard two mil soaked up micros. This is what loads of people use around their method feeder. You don't need anything else for when you're using a pellet feeder, just your standard two mil micro soaked up. You all know how I do them by now. One of these EVA cases, put my pellets in there, my dry pellets. I just cover them with water, give them a really good shake, zip the lid up, give them a really good shake, do that maybe an hour or so in advance, take them to the venue, you know, they'll be spot on when you get to the venue. For loading the feeder, I'm just going to tap just a few pellets into the, into the feeder, and I hardly want the pellets to be coming out of the feeder there. I want them to be really, really loose but just on the edge of the feeder. And then I can put my hook bait right at the top of the feeder and put another layer on. And because I've not compressed that first layer of pellets, I can actually compress this last layer of pellets, you know, not hard, but I can just sort of like put a bit of pressure on there. Now, what you've got to imagine is that first layer of pellets is gonna fall off and then your hook bait's gonna fall on top of that first layer of pellets. And obviously the pellets behind, actually in the feeder, are just gonna sort of like melt away and just, just help, uh, help with all the attraction. And like I say, you're trying to create that really tight parcel of food. So if a fish comes up and has one suck at your feeder, he's got your hook bait in there. So there we go, that's the feeder. Let's have a chuck out. We've got a, a little bit of a tricky cast today because we've got a willow tree overhanging, but I think we should be able to sort of like put it underneath there. There we go. So we're just about two meters short of the island. Like I say, I want, 
I want to give myself somewhere to go as the day goes on. So I think that's going to be spot on. Now what I'm doing is I'm taking my time and really carefully sinking the line. What I don't want to do is pull that feeder away from where it's landed because one, I think the noise maybe attracts a few fish. So obviously you want fish to, to come to that little splash. But also, we're talking about that tight parcel of feed. We don't want any pellets to be scattered around the swim. And obviously if you were to, uh, I can just see my tip under the water there. We just had a little line bite, just as my line set sink in there. So there's obviously a few fish around. This is first cast. Be interesting to see what happens. And there we go, all the lines sunk. And what I like to do, again, as with all of my feeder fishing, when I'm using sort of a self-hooking rig, is set my tip as straight as possible. I want my line pointing towards the feeder and I want my tip really straight. So that means I can see every indication. It means my tip's at its most sensitive. And also, there's just, there's just less tension in the water. So I think you just get more bites as a result of that. One thing I forgot to do is set the stopwatch. Obviously when I'm set, setting a, a trap, we're doing this style of feeder fishing where we're setting a trap, I always like to set a stopwatch and try and get a feel for the day. So that's the trap set. That's the theory anyway. Let's hope we get a fish. So folks, two and a half minutes into our first cast and we've got a fish. It doesn't feel a massive fish, but it feels like a typical sort of commercial fishery F1 or small carp. You can just see, I've just got to take my time. Like I say, we're using a an inline feeder, so you have just got to take your time because you don't want the weight of the feeder to bounce the hook out. It's a nice little F1. This is sort of like the exact sort of fish that we're talking about catching on a pellet feeder. So we all know that F1s, they've got small mouths. In the summer, they're eating machines, but during the cooler months and throughout spring maybe, they're probably a little bit more cautious. There we go, he's probably, the camera never does these, does these fish justice, but it's probably a pound and a half. And I'd say that is your classic commercial fishery fish on a lot of places now. We're not bothering with a net, keep net today. We're just gonna put, put them straight back. I think that's a great start. So like I say, two and a half minutes into the cast, it's always nice to have the, the stopwatch on the go. We had a few indications as well leading up to that fish. So there's obviously a few fish knocking around. You know, I'm not, I'm not a total idiot. I'm not as daft as I look. We have sat on a reasonable peg today. We're out of the wind. My only concern is, as we catch a few fish, we might push the fish away from us because we're not in a match with pleasure fishing. But we still hopefully should catch enough fish just to just to prove a point and hopefully settle settle a few things in my mind for the next time i i come here on a match so we're going to load the feeder exactly the same as we did before and we're going to chuck it in the same spot often i feel that for carp maybe at this time of year it's, it's wise to have a cast around but i think for f1s it's good to keep it keep it going in the same spot. So we go. We're just going to really carefully sink the line again.
I've got to be ever so careful with that willow tree overhanging. There we go. And hopefully we get another fish. Well, this has turned into a, a great little session. This is fish number, I think, four. And we're getting loads of indications that fish are there. I, I feel like I'm not getting loads of indications that fish are around the feeder. You know, when sometimes when you're fishing a method feed, you get lots of little taps because fish attack the feeder. I seem to be getting quite a few nice slow liners and then, and then the fish, then the tip just toes round with a fish on the end. Another cracking F1. I've had a couple of smaller ones that probably weren't worthy of the of the camera, but he's a nice fish, he is. So, so we'll have a. Have a little holding shot with him. Like I say, we're just doing the same thing. We're casting in the same spot. I just feel that the way we're actually putting the bait to the fish is right because like I say, we've, we've obviously got fish in the peg. But we're, uh, we're actually catching them rather than just sitting there getting a load of line bites. So again, we're loading that, loading that feeder up. The other benefit of a, of a little pellet feeder is I know for certain that it's landing the right way up every single time, even in shallow water. I sometimes feel, especially with maybe your alloys type of uh, method feeders that, that are all, they're all alloy. You have to load them quite, quite high for them to guarantee that it's gonna land the right way up. Obviously the weight's distributed throughout the whole feeder in one of those alloy feeders, whereas the weight is firmly on the base of this feeder. So it's definitely going to land the right way up and give you that perfect presentation every time. And it's just nice to know you're actually fishing all of the time with this sort of feeder. And it's, it's a tactic I used to love, but obviously with fishing, there's loads of different trends. They all come and go. We didn't set the stopwatch there. They all come and go. And everything seems to be all about method feeders and hybrid feeders at the moment. Whereas I think the pellet feeder sometimes get, gets forgotten about. I say we've had a few little indications just showing that this fish there. And most of the bites have been little nod round, then, then it will drop back. Obviously, we're fishing up against the far side. There we go. Cool. What a brilliant little session. We're fishing against the far side, so fish can't really run away from you, so they often shake their head against the feeder. The feeder, feeder hooks the fish, and the tip drops back. You can probably hear and probably see that the weather isn't exactly the kindest at the moment. I mean, we've had some horrendous weather over the last few days. But it's a little carp look. But I thought 
we've had a little break in the wind, a little break, break in the rain. It's definitely worth getting out for a couple of hours, but it looks like the weather's closing in on us again. A little carp this time. Pop him there. Look at that, beautiful little fish. Beautiful little fish, that is. He's maybe, he's not quite two pound. And like I say, that's classic. That's your classic commercial fishery fish. And you can see how fast we're catching them. And when I tell you sort of like 30 to 50 pound wins the matches here, we are well on the way to that weight. So there we go. I'm going to carry on fishing. I'm probably going to pack the camera gear away because it looks like it's going to absolutely hammer it down. Hopefully I've showed you a few little tips and tricks with the pellet feeder and why I like to use it so much. Until next time guys, tight lines. <laughs>